Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, in 18 minutes' time, legal highs become illegal. The Psychoactive Substances Act takes effect. The Act helpfully explains what it is designed to combat. A psychoactive substance means any substance which is capable of producing a psychoactive effect. That's how laws are drafted, folks. But it does go on to explain uh, a psychoactive effect, and it does so in a pretty all-embracing way. And it's that all-embracing way that, in fact, gives the Act its power, because no longer will ingenious chemists be able to circumvent the new law uh, with new concoctions, as everything is already banned. It is, however, such a broad definition that specific legal exemptions have had to be set out for less harmful psychoactive substances like food and coffee. Well, Secunda Kamani reports on what is a big legal change. We're doing Simon's service ourselves tomorrow. Colin's reading it, my husband Colin. Melanie Downey is preparing to bury her second brother, who died after becoming addicted to legal highs. Three years ago, William drowned after falling into a river whilst intoxicated. Then three weeks ago, she found Simon's body next to a packet of legal highs. After he died, Melanie wrote a post on Facebook, shared hundreds of times. Her brothers had been heroin addicts for years, but Melanie says when they moved on to legal highs, the impact was even more devastating. We couldn't make sense of the things that they were saying, lots of paranoia, delusional thoughts, psychotic episodes. After William's death three years ago, yeah. Simon became even more dependent on legal highs. As a family, we were all emotionally torn between trying to grieve for William and to try and support Simon. So it was a really, really difficult time for all of us. In the days before his death, Simon came to stay with Melanie and was clean for a while. He even wrote on his Facebook about the upcoming ban on legal highs. But then he got an email from a company that was selling them. He mentioned some offer that they were doing and it was three for two or free delivery if you spend over a certain amount. But he'd mentioned this special offer and he said, it, he said it feels like it's a sign. The next day, Melanie found her brother's body. Beside him was a packet of legal highs. I didn't see that at the time, but when the police came, they, they saw this and it was um, a cherry bomb, but apparently as a brand of legal high and that's what was beside him. But I knew when I saw him that he was gone. The legal high ban is coming into force the day after Simon's funeral. We'll always have drugs. We'll always have addiction problems. These drugs will just become illegal highs. It'll be the same drugs. It'll just be sold in a different manner. I think the ban coming into effect is a, is a positive step. So kids aren't getting enticed walking down the high street, you know, walking down the street, going next door for a can of energy drink and, and then to the shop next door for, for a legal high. These are some of the products that from midnight to night will be illegal to sell either online or in so-called head shops. The government is bringing this new law into force because in the past, when it tried to outlaw a particular substance, the manufacturers would just tinker with it, creating for legal purposes an entirely new one. However, not everyone is convinced that this new law is going to solve the problem. At this drop-in centre for vulnerable people in Birmingham, they've seen the numbers addicted to legal highs rise rapidly. I mean, this is stuff that I've just collected in this area, maybe over the last sort of three years. Like Melanie's brothers, many are addicted to what are called synthetic cannabinoids, but their effects are more like heroin or crack than cannabis. It's on a different level to anything we've ever seen before. I mean, it would take maybe one or two sort of pulls on a, on a joint, and people would just be keeling over to ban these things, you know, is a good thing. But that's not the full story, you know. Because the demand isn't going to go away? Because the demand won't go away. The reasons why people use won't go away. Most of us now smoke this not to get high off it anymore. Yeah, just we smoke it just so we ain't having stomach pains. Yeah. Kevin and Snowy have been taking synthetic cannabinoids for years now. They've seen the effects both on the streets and in jail. 
Was it due to your mental health then? It's changed a lot of people mentally. I think it's destroyed, it destroyed a lot of I people. It's certainly helped. Out. It definitely ain't helped me. It's yeah. made a lot of people more violent, I think. I got stopped about three weeks ago. A screwdriver. That was because of being, I wouldn't give somebody a spy. They're torn about what the effects of the ban will be. We know we're still going to be able to get it next week and the week after. Yeah. And we know. And everybody else does. But people are stupid. Would you, are you still in favour of it being banned then, even though it's going to be... For what it's done to people. Yeah. 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 Britain is said to have one of the highest rates of legal high usage in the world. But legal highs aren't all the same. Laughing gas inhaled in balloons in festivals and nightclubs is one of the substances that will be outlawed. It can be dangerous, but far less than synthetic cannabinoids. In fact, the wording of this new law is so broad, specific exemptions have been written in for alcohol, tobacco and caffeine. Here we have some pills of 2CB fly. Stephen Reed runs the Psychedelic Society and is a user of legal substitutes for drugs like LSD that are about to be banned. So there's a whole range of substances that are currently legal and the different substances have vastly different risk profiles. Uh, there are legal psychedelics like 1PLSD and TCB fly that actually are extremely safe. Um, there are other substances like the synthetic cannabinoids which seem to be much more risky and it seems to me we need to evaluate each substance or each class of substances according to its own risks and benefits and, and avoid trying to take uh, this blanket approach. Lots of the head shops selling legal highs of all descriptions have been closing down in recent months under pressure from local councils and trading standards. In Ireland, which passed a similar law six years ago, they've been completely wiped out. But there, there have only been a handful of prosecutions. For Melanie and her family, the law is already too late. But having seen her brothers on both heroin and legal highs, she's clear which is more dangerous. I'm not saying they would, might both be here today if they were still addicted to heroin. That lifestyle may have also caused their deaths. Um, but as far as them being healthy of mind and being able to have a re relationship with their family, then, then yes. Isn't that a strange thing? Heroin would have been a much better choice. Secunda Kamani there. Well, let's discuss this ban on legal highs. In the studio with me is the journalist from the Vice News Organisation and author of Narcomania, How Britain Got Hooked on Drugs, Max Daly. And from Belfast, we have Adele Wallace, whose son Adam tragically died last year, in fact, April last year, from uh, legal highs. And Adele, maybe I can start with you. Can you tell us how these drugs had affected Adam? Um, legal high drugs actually totally destroyed my son. He was only 17, he was still a child. And when he was using them, he totally changed in every way possible, in totally detrimental, negative ways. Um, it made him suicidal. He lost all interest in everything that was of value to him, everything that was precious. It destroyed him, you know, every way. And, and there was, you know, to watch your child change like that, and then the aggressive, you know, sort of violent side kicked in as well. And it was so destroying to see this happening before your eyes, and, you know, you know, to actually have to bury your child at 17 for something that was so easily accessed, so cheap, but yet so deadly, you know, it uh, beggars beyond belief how, and, you know... And Adele, he, as I understand it, he, he was aware that this was destroying him towards the end, correct? Yeah, but, uh, you know, it got to the point where, God help him, the, the, the drugs were so addictive, the legal highs themselves were so addictive, that, um, you know, inside there was this wee boy that wanted to try and stop, you know, and he actually did seek help on the 9th of April, and very sadly, you know, he'd actually put a status up on Facebook prior to that, stating very clearly, uh, my life is hell, it's, it's miserable, I want to get off these drugs, like, please don't come near me and offer me drugs like this, you know, don't offer me any of them. Um, it's not that I don't want to be your friend, you know, but I need to get myself, you know, off these. And then on the 9th, they actually did seek help and spoke to a clinical psychologist from CAMS, Child and Adolescent uh, Mental Health Services. And very sadly, on the 13th, he took um, a legal high, sky high. And to be quite honest, it was 1.5 gram, which is not a vast amount. You know, if you're buying them online, they usually start at 3 grams and upwards. And it was bought off a drug dealer, local. 
and that was shared between three, himself and two other youths. So it wasn't a vast amount between the three smoked, and that shared was enough to kill my child that night. It's heartbreaking. Uh, Max, does everybody agree on the objective that reducing the consumption of these things is a good thing? Is that... Is yeah, yeah, because legal, a lot of legal highs now, and we're talking synthetic cannabinoids and uh, caffeinones, are pretty nasty things, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you have reservations about whether banning is going to actually work or reduce harm, correct? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I understand why the government made this new law. They need, they, 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 there's no way that they could have school children going into these... Uh, head shops next to kind of mother care or whatever and getting extremely potent drugs and falling on the street. It's a ridiculous situation. Um, but, and, and it will probably stop some, um, some kids from getting hold of these drugs. Uh, the fact that head shops will, will shut down. I spoke to an owner of a head shop today and he is shutting down like most of them will do. The other ones will um, get into vaping, uh, cigarette vaping. But um, what will happen is that... Um, the more vulnerable, the, the, the more heavy-duty users of, le of legal highs, especially synthetic weed, um, will easily be able to buy them on the street because uh, the, the trade will immediately swap from the head shops to the street. And I, I, there was a study done in Blackburn last year, um, and a head shop, uh, the, the, the city's main head shop was shut down by the authorities and literally the, the, the local crack and heroin dealer bought up all the stock of the head shop and started selling it on the streets and he actually, right. to attract customers, he started giving away free pies. It's right, so, 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 yeah. so in fact you would say it's actually worse that way than buying it from a head shop? Than a, well, it, it, it's, yeah. Sales will continue to the more right. vulnerable people. I, I, I mean, I wonder, Adele, what you think of that. I mean, do, do you think Adam, if he hadn't had legal highs, would have like so many, many people would have bought illegal highs and whether just changing if you know, the status from legal to illegal is actually something that's not going to be very material or is it material? To, to be honest, Adam was actually able to access them from head shops and also from drug dealers. Mm. So in my opinion, it didn't make any difference. You know, he was accessing them both ways. They were available there, you know, and... Um, you know, I, I personally think, you know, the legislation is needed and obviously with any legislation there's always room for things to go underground because where there's money to be made by ill-gotten gains, people will try to abuse that. But I feel then that's where the whole system needs a shake-up, you know, they need more resources there to help people with addictions because there's not enough, I know for a fact in Northern Ireland, there is not enough resources to help with the amount of addiction and especially with legal highs. Mm. And, you know, there's a big volume and demand and there's, the services just aren't there to cover what's, you know, because it's rife over here, you know, which is, it's prevalent mm. in all communities, causing havoc in every way. And the, the worst bit is it's actually causing massive fatalities. Adele, uh, thank you very much indeed, Max. Thank you very much indeed. I've been getting away with it.